of one side of the road and if that if that one parcel owner uh, wasn't willing to, to do anything or work with anything with us and that could be a tremendous cost to the county. Um, in looking at this while you provided your analysis based on all of these they're not weighted in any particular way. No sure I think they're in alphabetical order. And that uh, we have um, the criteria themselves are not weighted. No, the criteria is not weighted. No. So that the number of parcels is different, is more important than the connector status or vice versa. Right. Yeah. There, there's no there's no particular order in in, in how they how these are set. Uh, we haven't issued any of them uh, any of these. Uh, Eight or nine criteria. We hadn't issued any of them a, a weight number, so uh, to, so to say, on that analysis, that Boring Pond Phase Two is the the highest rating uh, ranking road notion. And the way that we look at whatever our paid list is, whatever that number it is, if you obtain all the right of way, road number five is ready to pay above road number three. You don't wait until you get three and four in order to pay five. That is correct. Can I back up and interject? <coughs> we had also discussed the possibility of adding in under the criteria, for lack of a better term, a petition of interest on some roads that uh, some property owners felt like they wanted to get it paid, but, but yet we couldn't get consensus from other property owners on what they wanted to do. Do we want to add that into this list? I, well, I, I think that's kind of 
really that was, a, that was kind of the purpose of adding that item to the right of way from a percentage standpoint that you're going to have to have some way to gauge, to gauge that. And the only way to gauge that is going to be through some sort of a, a process of application type of form that you would a community and road owners would be able to take that list and go down the road and get folks to sign it and then it would come back and then we would gauge that do the calculations to see what those percentages are. Okay. I, for the for the most part we only have a handful 25 30 roads dirt roads in the county that have uh, that already have 60 foot of right -way. Most of them are prescriptive easements, right. uh, anywhere from 30 foot to 40 foot prescriptive easements, and we, we don't have the right away. And that that right there was what kind of I was explain the prescriptive easement. Prescriptive easement is where there was a two path road uh, or a farmer graded a road, and at some point in time the county had come over and started grading the road. Uh, the road was never actually deeded to the county. But over the county grading for a portion of seven years and maintaining it, we got an easement by prescription. So, um, so basically, you you obtain you obtain your right to do that. So a lot of these dirt roads, when we abandon dirt roads, we're not really given the property owners back property. We're just giving up our rights to grade it and maintain it. I assume when he had a right of way down there, that was more for him to have a checklist of do we have right of way or do we need to get right of way and that the petition of interest was an additional that, that's, that's criteria. That's part of the process. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> the way I see it, again, if you, just to use a simple analogy, you might have um, Mr. and Ms. Smith that's been giving you calls about getting their road paid. 25 other homeowners or property owners on that road. Well, you keep getting the call, so you make the initiative to get put the road in the process of getting it paid. But there again, if, if only 50% of the people on that road has no interest whatsoever of getting their road paid, they will live on a dirt road, they want to stay on a dirt road, they do not want that road paid. And they're just as adamant about not paying it as the ones are about paying it come to a point in time that we have to have some sort of a gauge here to say, well, listen, we don't need to put any more effort into this process, move it, do whatever you want to do with it, put something else in, in the place of it that is more than likely to be able to move through the process. Right. And I, I mean, I agree with what you're saying. I just would like to see it listed as a criteria in that list so, so the citizens would know that if there's not a 80% interest level on the front end that it doesn't, it's going to be hard for us to pursue getting that road paid. Yeah, the only thing that I want, and I'd like to come back to is, 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 is the issue for clarification on the distance versus parcels or, or, or homes. Look at that one. Was, if the, how many mailboxes are on the road or how many parcels are on the road or what is the distance um, of property owners on that road. I think all of that has a relevant role to play, play in, the, uh, in the whole process. Uh, I'll use it. I mean, if you've got a farmer that owns, again, 50% of the road, and again, he really doesn't have any interest in paving that road in his farmland. He's, that's the way it's been for him and his family for a hundred years. But yet on one end of it, you've had some development, some subdivision, or subdividing, and you've now got some uh, you know, 25 families that live on one end of it, at what point do you get there to say, okay, well, if the farmer that owns 51% of the distance, can he kill the product? Right. And that's what the distance issue is. But if you take it back to parcels, then his one parcel is just as important and carries just as much weight as the other 25 folks that's got a two and a half acre place there. So I was, I, I'm just, the what difference, I'm about to the difference between the idea of, of, of counting parcels versus counting the distance. When, uh, when Mr. Pritchard and I talked about going, to get, going back and to 
developing a petition of interest like Commissioner Powell was talking about. Uh, I went to several other counties throughout the state and looked at what their, how their petitions, petitions were written. And the majority of them were written by linear feet of road, uh, by you know how much road frontage do you own, uh, and and that's that's why uh, in what I had proposed to Mr. Pritchard and them was uh, was a linear footage uh, of road. Now there's nothing that set in stone says that that's what it has to be, uh, but uh, but linear footage of road is what a lot of the other counties had used as their criteria. So basically, you're telling me that that's, that's as it's developing, <coughs> that is kind of, in your opinion, the industry standard. Yes. That you well, see I, more of that than you see of anything else. Of, of the yeah. ones that I looked at, I mean, I, I looked at a handful, yeah. six or eight petitions uh, from from other counties, and that was what they had, what most of them had. Okay. I, I guess my question is, um, in regards to the community, you know, this is I was thinking you were talking more in terms of initiating the process. Or is it to even inquire yeah. yes. other than the people? Yes. Inquire of anyone. Is that the case or that, that's what the, that's what the petitions were reading is uh, is that uh, you know the linear, the, the weighted uh, average goes on linear linear footage of road. You kind of don't find that out until you need to go out there. Right. Until you start doing some surveying. Surveying, so that's what Right. You can do some estimates from the flats, I think. Right. Off the GIS. Part of the problem we're running into is if they go out and start surveying and they go out and start collecting data and do I and you got two or three trips out there, three or four trips out there, and you started investing money into that, and then you find out that well, two people want to get paid, but the other 12. You know, the farmer that owns you know, 200 acres out there, he doesn't want to pay you. And so, but we've already, we've already spent county resources to even kind of get started. And so our thought, my thought was, if we start kind of with a petition of interest on some of these roads, then we know up front before we start spending resources to take it to the next level, so to speak. Yeah, we, we you know, we've had a little bit of discussion on that. And of course the concern is, is is again trying to be as frugal with the revenue as we do now and trying to rather than plow a lot of money into the process before we get there i understand the difficulties of saying well you really don't know what the right of ways are until you do the engineering so you can't tell the property owners how much right away that they're going to lose this one might have to give up six feet this one might have to give up 12 feet you know and so <coughs> i know the dynamics of a neighborhood everybody don't live in happy land you know there's views across the street maybe and if he ain't i'm not going to give one grain of sand more than my neighbor's going to get we, we 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 realize that and we see that so i get the concept of of that but at some point in time i was just hoping that we could kind of narrow this process down to where we would have a much better idea about who had interest in getting a road paid before we do start kind of plowing some resources into that process that one right there to me should carry more weight than anything because if you can't get your percentage of participation right off the bat there's some folks that's going to tell you i don't want my road well, that kind of sounds like that was the top criteria anyway. But I mean, it sounds like you have a list of objective criteria that are applied in more of a subjective way that you consider all of it. And for this road, right away might be more important, whereas this road it might be, you know, school has to cross the bridge, the bus has to cross the bridge. So, but I was under the impression that right of way was already sort of the top consideration holding us up on some of these roads. Is that right? I mean, that was already kind of our yes, that's, that's right. I mean, um, I think I used the example the other day with somebody, uh, you know, Shelton Road. Uh, you know, we have, there are uh, probably five parcel owners, six parcel owners on Shelton Road. One of them is the Shelton Land Company who owns probably 
uh, you know, a third of the road. The other one is the Langdale Company, and then you have you have four houses. Uh, you have the, the road is you know almost two and a half, three miles long. Uh, the possibility of that road, you know, getting paved based under you know the criteria of linear footage uh, is probably slim to none. Uh, because the uh, in, you know talking to the big timber company owners and everything like that, uh, paved roads are you know what people you know they have more issues off the of paved roads than they do off the of dirt roads. Uh, a lot of times, and uh, and then but those four parcels on there's four houses that are on Shelton Road. Uh, I mean they're uh, you know, they own a very minuscule amount of road frontage. So if you look at road frontage, it would be a minuscule amount. But if you look at the number of parcels, they'd probably be over half. They'd probably be sixty percent of parcel owners. So uh, I think that, you know I think we got to figure out what our happy medium is. Uh, on, on some of those roads. <coughs> of course, we look at that state of the state commission determines they make them the cost of condemning that one majority of property. <coughs> That's what I was thinking. I, I almost would tend to lean towards um, the linear feed and the, you know, who owns it? Because I, you know, owning land. I mean, we're one of the few countries in the world you can even own land, and if that's debatable, how many taxes on you own for long. So, but I think that land ownership still means something here, and and I, I think linear fee, regardless of who it belongs to, is a, a good criteria. It's an objective criteria. So we're looking more, leaning more towards distance than. I think it might, it might be something now, but at the same time, you know we grow. And when you pay the little, you're going to get more more Correct. population density eventually in there, or industry. So it, it might be, I mean, fit for now, but it might not fit later. I mean, that's what we're in now. Yeah, well, it's got to be a balance between the parcels and the linear feet you might have. 15 parcels of the road that ain't but you know, a quarter mile long compared to property owners that own several linear feet. You know, a parcel too, and that's what you were saying earlier about you guys know, linear feet. Well, again, now you can look, you can use either one of them, either hand or both. Because often at the end of the day, it's going to be the commissioners that's going to say, hopefully, we can move this road forward. So they're going to have to make a decision on that road based on you're presenting the road as potentially as this road is a candidate to be paid because of maintenance issues, because of anticipated future growth, uh, the cost of the project, connected status, uh, school bus routes, average annual daily traffic, and then of course you add in the number of parcels and the right of way issues and then putting a percentage. That's what I was really looking at. Each one of them is a the dress. I'm just kind of looking at a percentage number that we can say, okay, this is, let's move forward. Um, addressing all that from your standpoint says, yeah, this is a viable candidate for a road to be paid. If Commissioner Page comes to you and says, I'd like to get this road paid, I'm getting, I'm getting called about this road. Then you begin this process to look at it right here to see whether or not it can actually move forward. And maybe the maybe the thing to do is to to, to not specify that number, you know, right here that it's going to be eighty percent of road frontage or it's going to be eighty percent of parcels. It's kind of maybe something that we have to weigh on at each uh, weigh on each each uh, case by case basis. Uh, some cases, some you know, some cases, you know, uh, like I, my uh, my thing earlier. You know, if you had one parcel owner that owned everything on one side of the road, uh, and so there's 50% of the road right there, but he, you know, he may maybe only, uh, you know, a tenth, you know, you know, five percent of the property owner out there, uh, parcel owners, and you know, maybe it's something that the uh, that the property owners that really want to pay may be willing to shift the road to one side, or you know, I, it, I think it may be a case by case basis that we have to look at. Can I ask if there are any of the criteria listed here that the commission does not feel, or uh, feel 
really not appropriate. No. I think all common sense you know, uh, criteria, I think it's, it all makes sense and important. But I have a question when you, I look in this room, Joyce is our most experienced commissioner, the rest of us have been in here, you know, three years going on forward. What do we do when you, you're dealing with a, a road list that's, you know, you constantly be changing up a group of commissioners? Ten years ago, they may have established some priorities on the roads as they want to put these on the list. But you get another group of like, herd of commissioners come through and they say, look, I don't think that list is what we need to work from. We want to revise it. So how do you get some continuity knowing this list could be fluid? And you've got commissioners who said promise somebody they won't pay the road ten years ago. But right. this board may feel like we don't need to pay that road. You know, the promise made and that I think citizens you know, angry. So I, you know, I say that, that process that, that process is, is worthy of discussion. But I I have to put that that process weighted deeply back to staff. Staff knows the history. They've been here through the process of all these roads and these lists being generated and that list changing as time goes on from commissioner to commissioner to commissioner. So I think once you, as a commissioner, if you get into, get to the point that you think that you're going to come, that you can come in or choose to come in and turn the paving list, let's say upside down, all of a sudden you're taking a perspective of that paving list based on what your thoughts are and, and maybe even your, your constituents for your district. However, reality is, is that no one any better than staff knows what commitments have been made in the past because a lot of commitments or so-called promises have been made uh, and have not been able to come to fruition simply because that funding has not been there. Right. Not because of any fault of the property on or the folks living on that road, it's because the funding hasn't been there. So if you're out there determining <coughs> whether it's previous commissioners, <coughs> or existing commissioners, if you're out there telling them that you can't get to their road because the funding's not available, and then when you do get in a position that funding is available, you walk in a real serious issue of a line right there when you say that you can't get done. And, uh, and, and I'm not right made a promise yeah. to anybody. Yeah. I, put a lot of weight, I put a lot of weight back on and that staff. Answer that question for him to share yes, because sir. when I came in and had a lot of calls about different roads and everything, and I had Mike to ride with me on that road so he could tell me what's the best thing for that road and what he could put on the table. So that's how I said all things get on that road. <coughs> I just want to say that uh, one, one of the biggest wake up calls I had uh, once elected as a commissioner was finding out a lot of people didn't want to be in the I actually went with this list that you have here. I drove uh, pretty much about all of these roads. And I want to say about all of them, you at least got one or two people that really say, well, if I had my way, wouldn't you? You know, because it's 2014 and a lot of people moved out there really to be on the dirt road. And so, I just wonder, you know, I understand. I, I guess both sides. Know, my question was more is how does staff, how do y'all have long range plans when you have conditions that change and the list may change and you've been working off of a list that was put together two or three years ago and now you got two or three new commissioners and they want to change it. How do y'all deal with that and not waste a bunch of money <laughs> playing on stuff that doesn't come back? Cross the fingers. Well, <laughs> <laughs> presented to them what the criteria is, just as we have you, and so this is the way these roads were evaluated. That's how we got to where we are, and it hasn't been, uh, well, Commissioner May wanted this, and that's why I saw it. Well, how does it meet the criteria? Well, we really didn't look at that. Commissioner A just said, put it on there, and everybody said, okay, and they put it on there. We haven't had that from the standpoint of saying, I'd like to get this road paved, evaluated staff based on these criteria. And that's, that's how we've done it. And that, this criteria I think is important because that kind of alleviates Commissioner Jones wants one thing, Commissioner Smith wants something else, and just sticky stuff on the list. You've got a, at least you've got a uh, process you're going through. It doesn't become so political. I think it helps a lot. Since y'all have told me that uh, all of the listed criteria is relevant, 
is there anything that you want to add to this list? I had a pretty comprehensive thing. I had a proposal for a petition of interest. This petition of interest needs to be added to this. Is it necessary? I mean, we've got a lot of dirt roads, and you guys have been doing a long time, but would you say that you would not be able to, at this moment, if I started naming dirt roads, for the most part, would you say that you would not already say <coughs> no based on history, or is there still a lot of roads out there where you're, it's all theory at this point, have been a lot of interaction with the property owner? Let, let me back up for my answers that. <coughs> his, his barometer on that is going to be, I want my road paved. He doesn't get many calls saying, I don't want my road paved until you start the paving discussion. So it's kind of like us, the people that won't call, the people that don't just assume nothing's going to change. How would it work? How would the petition work? Well, the, the way I, I put it together on a road that some folks called me about was we went and talked to them. We said, hey, here are your options. It's up to you as the landowners on this road to determine do you have a valid interest from the majority of your neighbors. And generally, one of those neighbors starts a start, on it. Start it. Some, some yeah. brain leader out there. Will right. Start. So we're talking some simple. Yeah, yeah, it's real basic. Yeah. Are you, do you have an interest in this road being paved? And then if, if we know that on the front end, then it saves them doing an awful lot of lead work for one or two people where they're doing engineering stuff. And then you come back and find out, well, they were the only two people on the road that wanted to pay. Everybody else wanted it to stay dirt. I considered that bullet point right away to include petition falling under that. If we need to do it separately, then I don't have any problem listing you know, petition separate because right away, if you have a petition, people wanting to have the road paid, you're willing to give the right away, but that answers that. Now, well, he's looking at that right away there is saying, I have adequate oh, right away, or I do not have adequate. It, it's more of a quantitative physical do. Am I right? Do you have a retained on right. Do I, do I have right away? Or what's it going to take? Like, if you, if you go back and look at your list, it, it had right away and it had yes, no, and right. stuff like that. So that, that to him, when he's looking at it, is a quantitative issue. My, my wanting to add petition of interest is, um, are there enough people on the road that are interested in having it paved? I agree with that. I support that. I'm sorry, Richard. That's kind of a long way around. No, I just was, I don't think that it's a, I think it's a good idea, but I want to consider, you know, who executes it, who polices it, to what extent is the commissioner involved versus the staff? Um, I think those are some questions, but the idea is not a bad idea. It's, it's not. You just can't say that's a bad idea because that's what it is. Well, my, my way of doing it was when we talked to the residents and said, here, here are the options, okay? And once we explained the options, then we said, okay, we're leaving you this petition of interest. And basically says, I am a property owner, yada, 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 and I, have, I am interested in having my red faith. And it's up to them to get the signatures. Now we know how many parcels. So you're saying the, the person that raises their head first says, I want my road paid. Right. They're in charge of collecting signatures at that point. Right. Some or good, some or first or second or third, but yeah. somebody on somebody somebody that road. road. But let me, let me, if I can add this. What I, what I have told uh, property owners that want the road paid is that, listen, this is, this is where you, what you need to do to get the process started. The process would be is that you need to get a petition down your road, just just a piece of no put paper. It don't matter. But just from the property owners that you know of, go down there and get their signatures that they that they want this road paid. Then you can bring it to a county commission meeting. Citizens can be heard. You can make that presentation, and it would go to the engineering, and then they would look at the viability of it and do start the study, and then they would look at those property owners and see what the signatures are. And that's where I'm kind of wanting to get to the point. And maybe right away it's the wrong place to have that percentage on down your property through the petition. If you've got only 50% of the parcel owners, for example, that says, I want to get, that they bring to you, that you don't have enough people to move that road into the paving process. So is the, all right, so if we move forward with the petition process, and I like your idea of having to come to the citizens wish to be heard, that's because that's what I was in my mind, I was thinking, well, they need a place to come to present that. Um, and so, um, <coughs> sorry. So if we go back over the years as to how many petitions that, have, that we have that came before us and that we have a petition that they don't have any right, but they're not willing to go out and get it. We can have a fact. Like that, right. over the years, we have 
you've seen a pile of petitions that have never come to fruition because when you go out there with those right-of-way deeds, uh, people, you know, they forgot how to sign the name. From the, they forgot how to sign from the from the from the, from the petition to the. And, and, also, and that is what I'm trying. That's what when I started thinking about this. That's the whole thing that I'm trying to get resolved is that we're, 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 and I know we have to find out, but trying to get everything done and put all of our resources and our effort into to, to finding out what those right-of-ways are, and then you go down the road to see if anybody wants to give up the right-of-ways, and half of them don't want to give up that right-of-way, then all of a sudden, what they want the road? The road's out to the meeting, the road's out the gate. And from that standpoint, you can't get people on a road to work together to get their road paid and you probably it's probably not gonna happen. Yeah, that would change the flow to come up with the petition that they want the road paid to the other side of this too is um, you know I don't think it is a bad policy for the Board of Commissioners to say it is our goal to have no dirt roads. Mm -hmm. I don't think that is a bad goal. Okay if that is the goal, I'm not saying it is or isn't I'm saying if that's the goal, we're gonna say we in a perfect world we don't want any dirt roads. Well, then that kind of removes the petition aspect of it because we would already pave that road if we had the funds and the right of way and the number of parcels and all this other stuff. So a petition then only potentially moves you up or down on the list if you haven't had any interaction with the commissioner. Now that's all theory, but I, I just, if, if, we, you know, if we've got all the dirt roads on a paving list now, then what what value would there be in the people on your dirt road issuing a petition? But we don't have them all. I mean, that's what I'm saying. All the roads aren't all there. You know, like you say, if it was a perfect world, we had three hundred billion dollars, we'd pay every road in Lawrence County. If we had that money to give up to go pay roads, we could probably do that. That's not that's not uh, what we got. Um, so I may petition. not be able to get to where I'm thinking about getting with. Road to fall to the issue of determining the right of ways ahead of time. It's not a bad idea to have a process for people that want to get their road paid. I just am wondering what value that's going to have. Is it going to, if someone issues a petition, they bring it and staff goes out and surveys, is it going to, by virtue of the fact that someone petitioned us, is it going to replace a road on the current list? So, what value does the petition have in, in your opinion? Well, I think the, road, the current list that you have now, if I understand the current paving list that we call, you have your, you have basically your paving list and you have what's called a supplemental list. That was created years ago where just kind of, you know, if somebody wanted a road paved, you just put there. And you're still not even close to touching the road, all the roads in Lowndes County that needs to be, that, that's dirt roads. And if we keep Harrison out of the room. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is, is that I can look at what I've looked at from the standpoint of roads that's even on the list now, and there's potentially some roads there that if you're not successful with right-of-ways, you may not be able to get those roads paid. Right, that's right. All right. Mr. Chairman, I think that there also then, if we're going down this path, there has to be a petition that someone could submit to keep their road from being paid. If we're going to go down that path, I think you have to. If you're going to start issuing, if people are able to collect signatures to do one thing, they should be able to collect signatures to do the other, I, I think. I mean, I, because not everybody wants to live on a paved road. I do, but not everyone does. So I, I think if we're going to initiate some sort of official petition, um, I think people should have the option to petition to keep their road a dirt road if we open that door. I think there's a significant number of people who would say that would be an only, that would only be fair. Even if I disagree with it, I think they'd have a point. Well, Okay. What I'm hearing you say is, and when I get to find, when I find out that they don't want the road paved, is when you can't get enough signatures on that petition, petition that went down that road. Unless, well, unless someone says, you know what, I don't, I'm going to preempt the county here from paving my road. Would you sign this petition and say to keep this road a dirt road till the end of time? Hey, all I got to do is bring me the piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> but you're open to that. You're open to that other end of that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> take it to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> that means that's just one area you wouldn't have to be 
we would never spend any resources. Yeah, no, you're done. 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 you are done 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 you that all they're, all they're out there for is to build pine trees. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't, there are some of them out there I, I don't see, you know, in the perfect world. If we had the $400 million, then we could go pave every dirt road. He just added another yeah, 100 million. million. 300 million. <laughs> <laughs> by, the, by the time Harrison gets to it, it'd be 200. Go ahead and get to the million. So, uh, in the perfect world, there, there, are, there are roads that we, we will probably never pay just because of, and I, I think it's old, old Lake Park, Old State, just one of those old roads out there off of Boring Pond uh, Road uh, that, that connects over to Howell Road. Over there. There's, it's nothing, there's, there's not a driveway on the road. It's nothing but pine trees. And I mean, Cato. Well, Cato Road. I mean, those, those roads like that will, you know, uh, uh, Boyd, Boyd Pond Lane, uh, you know, we're, we're fixing to work on Boyd Pond Lane. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's one house on Boyd Pond Lane, and, uh, and you know, that road, will, I don't know that that road would ever right. come up. Yeah. I think we ought to call for leave to room. Uh, mentioned uh, putting down that petition of interest because 